I'm hungry too, but we need to know what's going on out there. Are people close by? Can they help us out? Is there a train running? Or cars? We know nothing at all, nothing. The others say it's warmer in the Mediterranean. Mom would definitely try to go there. If I can get this thing fixed, then we're going to find Mom. I'm gonna go out and get us some more firewood, okay? Come on, I'm sorry. Daddy, I wanna go home. I know, honey. Daddy wants to go home too. Entirely new challenges, totally new social structures arise out of this situation. At the top of the ladder now are the people who can help with survival. Professor Dombrowski is a disaster management specialist and a consultant to the German government. The business manager is suddenly worthless if he doesn't have the right skills. The professor is worthless if he can't build, hunt, and gather food. Perhaps the person who is unable to fight to protect his own people from theft, for example, is now also considered worthless. In other words, the entire established social order is restructured to reflect the division of labor. Of course, an extremely important intellectual heritage gets lost in the process. of a comet impact, Earth enters a new ice age. For two months, not a ray of sun. One band of survivors finds refuge in a farmhouse. In a world gone dark and cold, living turns into merely existing. The cold saps strength and steals courage. But for Henri and his daughter Michelle, a sliver of hope will break the gloom. Yes, honey. Of course. The planet is starting to thaw, yet it will take years to return to normal. The Big Chill isn't science fiction. It's based on prehistory. Matthew Huber has developed a climate model for the months after the impact. Now you might think after a while, it'll rain out, it'll fall out, and, and indeed that's what happens over the course of weeks and months, the dust will settle. But the news is not as good as you might think it is. What ends up happening then is at the same time as the big rock slammed into the surface of the earth, what it was slamming into was a whole bunch of carbonate rock and, and seawater. That injected into the atmosphere a whole bunch of sulfur. And this aerosol or haze persists in the atmosphere long after the dust is settled. And this haze will, in time, lead to a cooling. As the polar ice caps extract moisture from the air, they swell. Paris now shivers amid an ice desert. Average temperature? 50 degrees below normal. Only near the ocean are temperatures bearable. In New York City, the mercury hovers just below zero. In Africa, winter cripples the baka. Food runs low, but most are too weak to hunt. 
For the first time in Lomama's life, a sight indescribable. His language has no word for snow. Familiar terrain is now foreign. Worse, it's hostile. Behind the facade, nature is robust. Meet a Lazarus, a creature that comes back from the dead. These are the freeze-tolerant wood frogs of Canada. They survive in our environment for eight or nine months, frozen solidly under the ground. As the frog starts to freeze, ice penetrates into the frog through its veins and arteries. Your veins and arteries are like long tubes, and what ice does is it grows down the long tubes, and it pushes the blood into the center of the frog. At this time, the heart is beating very fast. <laughs> the frogs, although not frightened, their heart speeds up and their blood flow goes very fast. But when ice eventually freezes the blood, then the heart stops, all surrounded by ice. If you have electrodes and put it into the frog brain, no brain activity at all. They are dead. If they were in a hospital, if they were on ER on television, they would be dead, flatlined. But as soon as they thaw out, the organs begin to start again. The electricity comes back to the brain and they have normal brain patterns. They don't forget what they have learned. They, they're, they're not damaged. And an impact event far away from them that only extended winter a little bit of time, they might not even, literally not even notice. The frog adapted by producing glucose to protect cells from the cold. But adaptation takes time. Yesterday, Fernando's food ran out. Now hunger has driven the dogs away. Hey, guys. Hey! Hey, guys! Come on! While ice grips the world, Ground Zero bakes in residual heat from the impact. Sulfur chokes the air. Water is scarce. In this environment, no one can adapt. We're never gonna make this work. Come on, we're almost there. Shot, look out! Get down! The funny thing is, that's just normal activity. I don't think it has anything to do with the impact. Who's that? It's Chad. I thought you were. <laughs> we're building a raft to get over to Maui. Mauna Loa is overdue. We don't want to be around when she starts to spit. 
<laughs> you think you've got time to finish that? Hey, come with me. Mauna Loa is the world's largest volcano. It's been growing for perhaps a million years. It's also one of the most dangerous volcanoes. Seismic activity increased in 2002, and now the giant is rumbling. Europe remains locked in a deep freeze. Survivors must choose, conserve energy and stay put, or leave. Michel and Henri joined the exodus. To stay is certain death. Far to the south, the Mediterranean holds the promise of warmth and life. But getting there will be treacherous. It's like hiking across the Arctic. One of the things that's going to happen is that the insides of the continents are going to get extremely cold. Something like 30, 40, up to 50 degrees below zero. And we can also expect that the, the oceans will not be that cold. So if you want to survive, the place to go is the coasts. As far as I can tell, the, the best place to be is right near a large body of water that's going to retain its heat. If you move away from the coasts, the temperatures are going to be like nothing that you've ever experienced before. Well, what do you think then? You still want to keep working on your death trap? The Macaulay, we found it in a cave nearby. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is no and shine. They're coming with us. We leave tomorrow morning. Their boat is already crowded. More hands aren't welcome. On the trek south, Henri and Michel take refuge in an empty train station. Henri still hopes to make radio contact with other survivors, and with any luck, find his wife. The station is a shelter from the cold, but a hothouse of disease. With immune systems ravaged, the smallest infection can be a death sentence. <coughs> the catastrophe has shattered families. Millions are dead, millions more lost. With no television or radio, survivors post hopeless appeals for the missing. Then, a discovery that could help reunite Michelle with her mother.